Hi everyone, I'm Marton Balázs, one of the probabilists in Bristol, and today I want to tell you about Beltrans paradox. Before I can do that, I want to show you about the uniform distribution. So the question is if I have an interval from 0 to 10, and I want to pick a random point in there, what is the probability that this random point falls in that uh, black area from 2 to 4? And to find that out, I can scan all of my range from 0 to 10, and ask the question, so it didn't fall in there from 0 to 2, it does fall in there from 2 to 4, of course, and not from 4 to 10. And since my point is random and equally likely to be anywhere, all I need to do is just compare the lengths of interval. So the answer is the length of the interval from 2 to 4, which was my question, over the total length from 0 to 10, so 2 over 10 or 1 fifth. Now the real question comes now, if I look at a circle of unit radius, I want to find out about random chords of this circle. So this is a random chord. This is another one. If you can spot it, it's right there. Happened to be very small. This is another one, and this is another one, and so on and so on. These are all random chords. And now the next object I want to look at is the equilateral triangle in that circle, inside inscribe that circle. The question is, what is the probability this random chord will be longer than one side of this triangle? Okay, so here it is clearly longer. Here it's shorter, this tiny thing here happens to be very short, so it's shorter. In this case it's longer, in this case it's shorter, and then longer, and shorter, and shorter again, you get the point. Okay, question, what is the probability of this happening so that the random chord is actually longer than one side? My answer is one half. Okay, so why is it one half? A little bit of geometry reveals that the side of the equilateral triangle is distance one half from the center of the circle. And so if I look at the center of my random chord and I look at the distance from the origin of the circle, clearly if that distance is less than one half, then the chord is longer than one side of the triangle. So if I cover this distance from 0 to 1 half with my random chord, then it is going to be longer. So this is the event I'm looking for. Whereas if the distance is more than 1 half, then the length of the chord is shorter than one side. So the answer is 1 half over the total range of 1 half plus 1 half. So the answer is half over 1, which is 1 half. Or is it? Maybe it's 1 third. Let's look at the tangent of the circle at one point of the circle and then let's look at the random course starting off from that point in a random direction. If that direction from the tangent is between 0 and 60 degrees, like in the picture here, then the answer is it's shorter than one side, so the answer is no. From 60 to 120 it's longer than one side of the triangle, so the answer is yes. And from 120 to 180 it's shorter again, so the answer is no again. So my final probability is a range of 60 in the middle over a total range of 180 degrees, so it's one third. Or is it? Let's now look at another way of finding a random chord. So here's my triangle again, and this time I'm going to look at the midpoint of the random chord. So I'm going to drop a point uniformly randomly in that circle. Okay, that's my point. And then I look at the random chord, which has its midpoint exactly at that random position. And now I want to ask, is that longer or shorter than the triangle? So in this example, if I turn the triangle parallel with one side parallel to the chord, I can see it's shorter. In this example, that's my random point. So look at the chord with center being that random point. Turn the triangle to find out that this, this time it's actually longer. Random point again random chord with that center, turn the triangle, this time it's shorter. So what is the probability that it's going to be longer than one side? Well, again, look at the random point. If it's at the center, then of course the random chord is longer. And in fact, if I go this up to distance one half from the center in any direction, so if I'm in that green circle, then the random chord will be longer. And if I'm outside that green circle with my random midpoint, then the chord will be shorter. So the answer is the area of the green circle, which is half square pi, over the total area of the big circle, which is one square pi, so it is one fourth. So is it one half, or is it one third, or is it one fourth? Well, that's exactly what Bertrand's paradox is. 
dropping a random chord on a circle is not a well-defined probability space. If you come to Bristol, we'll show you how to properly define a probability space. So looking forward to seeing you here.